I made nachos. Nah. Like a week ago, I think, when I went on my last shopping trip. I went on a shopping trip today. It was an adventure. But one of the things that I had to make a confession to was that the best salsa that you can get, really, in French supermarkets that i found so far is actually the Doritos brand Hot Salsa. It's not actually hot because we're in France, so it's like mild, mildly spicy. There's a little spice to it. But what I failed to mention in that Instagram post that's actually really vitally important is you have to have cilantro with it, like fresh cilantro to make it actually good. Uh, but I have some fresh cilantro and some pickled jalapenos, the Doritos salsa, cheddar cheese straight from the UK. Hopefully that keeps coming down. And um, these tortilla chips, which are actually passable, that are, I, I feel like maybe I should do like, since I'm stuck at home anyways, like trying out all of the available Mexican options for tortilla chips, salsas, other sauces, other tortillas, whatever, just for the heck of it. We might make a video about that at some point because it's kind of sad to be honest. They're already cold because I set up the camera and everything, but. Cheddar's good. How are you doing? Hopefully you have nachos in your life. I'm really glad that I still have them in mind. But, but really, how are you doing? Like this is a weird, really weird, unprecedented time in life, in history. We've gone through crazy things in the last 30 years, my lifetime, right? M major terrorist attacks and wars and financial crises and whatever. This just feels different and weird and surreal in so many ways, and so I hope you're doing well. I'm struggling a little bit to find the right tone, to try to strike the right tone in all this, because I want to maintain a sense of humor. I've been playing a lot of zombie games on Twitch, which seems mildly insensitive, but also very on the nose for the time being. And I also found myself in a lot of conversations just spiraling around this very dark drain, which I think is understandable, but we get into these conversations with friends or family, I do at least, where just kind of, it's good to stay in touch and keep, in, keep each other as informed as we can, share the news that we're hearing, compare notes and statistics and everything else, and try to encourage each other to be as safe and as uh, sanitary as possible in the midst of this madness. But I've also recognized that like there's a, there's a weight that comes with that, but I feel like I put on other people in a way that I, I can kind of dwell in that drama, and I don't know if that's the fiction writer in me that's already been thinking about worst case scenarios my whole life, and this is like, well, you know what, at least the government's still holding together. Um, there's a level of weight and darkness in a lot of the conversations that I've been having that I've realized like I probably could pull back from a little bit and try to inject a little bit more levity and fun and joy and light into the conversations, not to erase the fact that we're living in strange and potentially very dark times, but to try and lift the conversation, but also lift the people that I'm having the conversations with up and out of those moments, even if just for a moment. I've definitely stopped keeping up with all of the minute by minute news. I found a couple of really good news sites that were in French, and I really like some of the French news sites that I've been reading because they seem so much more concerned with just laying out the facts of what's going on and are fairly dispassionate about it, which is a really nice way to read like what's going on. And I don't, and I want to stay informed, but I also recognize that like I, I need a little bit of space from that. And I'm already stuck in a very tiny room all by myself. You can see basically all of the space that I have to live in. I'm going to do a room tour here sometime soon. I've owed you a chateau tour ever since we finished finish the chateau. But the reason I haven't done it is because there are a couple of elements in here that I still haven't finished. So I'm going to try and get a few things delivered to finish the chateau completely uh, before making that video. But no promises on that, I suppose. But I want to I want to focus on some of those things, some small constructive things. Um, I'm fortunate that I can continue to work from home, that I can continue working on my book, that we can develop the Discord server and some places where you can hang out, that I can keep making videos, that I can, uh, you know, really kind of centralize my life a little bit. And it's almost what I needed. Like I was going out, I felt the pressure to get out and do Paris and travel and do all these things that like I, I really needed a break from after doing it for, you know, every day for over three years. And I never really gave myself that space. Even when I stopped vlogging daily, I still felt that pressure. I was still trying to go out. I was still trying to figure out how to capture an essence of something that had already kind of, I don't know that it had been lost, but it was time to make some changes from. And I'm really, really, really fortunate that it's so weird. Okay, this is a weird thing. I know this is a little bit meandering here, but it's, I'm in, I'm so fortunate to have gotten to the place that I'm at and finishing this book on how I got to Paris and contrasting where my life was even just a few years ago and then like a decade ago to where I'm at today. I'm so lucky. And so then it's also really funny because there's this cycle within the book of like every time things start going really well, something happens to really bring it down. And a lot of times that's even like global crises. And I'm in, but I'm in a place where I don't, I don't really, f I feel, I don't feel the same overwhelming sense of dread that I have before. And I think that's partially because things in my life have changed for the better in the last few years, partially because I've grown and partially because I've chosen, I think the discipline of vlogging even if it led to some challenging times now for me, like to in burnout and whatever else. Vlogging was a really good opportunity for me to sit and hear my thoughts being put on the table and 
basically make a decision, is this how I actually want to think about this? Is this how I want to approach this situation? And it used to be that in my garage monologues, especially when I was in a really, really dark, terrible place and uh, struggling just to see where the light at the end of the tunnel was, if there was any light at the end of the tunnel, one of the real benefits was being able to stop, share my thoughts, hear them, and then go back out into the garage and be like, that's not how I want to see the situation and approach it again and again until I found that thread, that way of thinking about it that really helped me to see a path forward that was both honest, honest with myself, honest with you, but also optimistic with hope for the future. And I think that that's something that's really caught on for me in a way that I kind of see life now. So in wanting to bring levity and light to the conversations that I'm having, I also wanna make sure to strike the right tone in my vlog. I don't wanna minimize the fact that there are a lot of people out there that are struggling right now, that are having a hard time. There are a lot of people that are losing their jobs. Things are kinda of crazy and probably gonna get crazier for the foreseeable future. There's a lot of really good information out there. I don't wanna become a, a news source for that information, but I do want to say that Times are hard and that's real, but the way that we choose to look at our struggles and our situation, the narrative that we craft around it, the way that we choose to see our life, our struggles, and whatever path lays in front of us has a very dramatic impact on how we manage to actually survive that. And my inner monologue used to be so negative and used to be so self-incriminating and kind of self-loathing, a little bit self-victimizing. Like I used to see myself as the victim of my story all the time. It took me a long time to change the way that I crafted that story and the way that I put myself in the story. And vlogging, sharing that story publicly was a really big and helpful tool for that. I'm not suggesting right now, I mean, maybe you should start vlogging. That could be a good thing. But if I can leave you with any suggestion today, I didn't mean to come into this, into this with suggestions. I wanted to sit down and just kind of share about where I'm at. But if I can say anything, I think that what I want to do is twofold. One, I want to continue to be honest but optimistic in the way that I present myself both here but also in my conversations with my friends and family, which I've noticed a kind of a negative trend in the way that I've been talking to those people that are important to me. Um, just because it's easy to kind of dwell in the moment and, and just let it overcome you because it feels kind of good to sit in the drama for a minute. But it's not really helpful for the long term. And then the second thing would be to continue to try and take a step outside of myself and hear the way that I'm talking, hear the way that I'm thinking, and try to put that into the narrative that I actually want for my life and the upward trends that I want my life to take. And that might be completely out of my control. I, my life might be on the verge of a very strong downward trend. It's happened before. I've definitely found myself at the bottom of some pretty deep ditches. I hope I'm not headed back for one anytime soon. And I don't feel like I am, but I feel like that's a lot, a lot of that's because my mentality's changed. And even if challenges come my way, I don't know that I'll see them as ditches again, so much as challenges and adventures for what they are, is what I really hope. So I would like to encourage you to do the same, to try and put a little bit of positivity and hope and optimism into these trying times because they're very trying, that's a real thing, but how we frame them can have a real impact. And then the other side would be, I don't know if that's in conversations with your friends, whether you should start vlogging, journaling, blogging, it doesn't have to be anything public, but maybe take some time to really take down your thoughts, your notes, and just try to pour your heart out a little bit. Then go back, listen to that, see where you're at, and ask yourself, is that how I really wanna think about this? Is that how I really wanna approach this problem? And then come back at it again and try to find a good way to really actually tackle it. I think that for me, has been one of the most helpful exercises over the last few years out of anything I've ever done. And I didn't realize that was what was going on until after the fact. Well, I think I recognized it in the main, you know, during the garage monologues, I think I, I wasn't totally oblivious to it, but I didn't realize how much it was actually helping me in the midst of that. And I'm so grateful that I did. Anyways, I'm gonna eat these nachos because they're gonna get cold. And then I got a water gilly because I totally forgot to, you can see, you can see Gilly up here. Uh, she's a day underwater, but that's okay. She's a succulent. She can handle it. It's, she's a desert flower. I mean, she's fine, but I, I should water her today. So I'll, I'll share some, I'll, I'll share some Gilly watering with you after I, after I eat my nachos, because that's kind of important. Also, I have some plans to do videos where I'm not just sitting on the couch in the near future, but I'm also trying to take it a little bit slow getting into this whole new routine in a weird way. Like I dove in on a couple of projects to get them out of the way, but then there's some other ones where I'm just kind of like, I'm going to be here for a long time. So I kind of want to make sure that I don't like run out of ideas and things to do right away. Which is probably impossible because I have a crap ton of things that I should be doing, but you know what I mean. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking to you now and I'm going to eat some nachos because, oh man, they're really like frozen together.